So we've seen that the pressure and temperature in the middle of these things vastly exceeds that in the sun, and that's a puzzle. I mean, if it's really so dense and so hot in the middle, why isn't it undergoing huge amounts of nuclear fusion? Um, you should see immense amounts of nuclear fusion, but if it was fusing much faster than the sun, it should be much brighter than the sun, whereas you know this thing is you know, a thousand times fainter than the sun. What's going on here? Well, so clearly it's not fusing hydrogen, because if it were, it would be, uh, wouldn't look like it appears. So you could imagine it maybe being made out of something else that doesn't fuse. So, for example, iron wouldn't fuse, but we don't even need anything necessarily that extreme. If we make something, for example, it's much harder to fuse helium, and harder still to fuse things like carbon and oxygen and sulfur and silicon. So maybe these white dwarfs are made out of something that's much harder to fuse, where even though the density and temperature is enormous, it's still not high enough to make those nuclear reactions occur. But that's a bit strange. I mean, the universe, as we know, by and large, is made of 80% hydrogen, 20% helium. So we need these things to be something quite different. Th that's right. So, you know, we need to look at how you might make such an object. And, uh, of course, we could assume that this object just decided to form, but it had to get really dense to begin with. And maybe one of the easiest places to look for dense objects is in the center of stars, which are, of course, dense on their own. Well, we'll come back to that. But to my mind, it's actually a secondary problem. I'm really sure it's made of some weird stuff. The real puzzle to me, though, is how something this dense and this heavy can support its own surface. Because yeah. you've got the surface layers with this absolutely incredible density and gravity sucking them down. Why don't they collapse down? I mean, on Earth, I mean, we're sitting in these chairs and gravity's trying to suck us down. But luckily, the chairs have got good, strong chemical bonds that stop us from collapsing through the floor. But if we weighed 40,000 tonnes, those chemical bonds wouldn't do the trick. You can calculate how strong chemical bonds could be, and there's no way any chemical bond that we can conceivably think of could resist the incredible pressure of these things. Right, so we need to go through and come up with some way for the, uh, the, this, this little star, for Sirius B, to push against gravity. And it can't be the normal forces that we see here on Earth, or even that we see on the sun. I mean, those chemical forces are what keep the sun from collapsing down. Yeah, in the sun, that's what's helping it is the heat coming out from the middle. Right. That's what stops it from collapsing down. But there is no heat coming from the middle of these things. If, if there was nuclear fusion, as we know, it would be far too bright. So it's not heat coming out that's causing it. It's not chemical bonds. So what could possibly stop it from just collapsing all the way down to no size at all? So it strikes me that uh, we have a couple tricks up our sleeves through the wonders of quantum mechanics, where we can go through and see how quantum mechanics can provide this extra force that we don't necessarily see here in this room. So let's talk about some of the weirdnesses of quantum mechanics.